think the last time we talked about the sympathetic nervous system, I was in lockdown and in my back garden talking about autonomic nerves. Now I'm back in the lab and have been for quite a long time. Let's do this with models so I can, I can point at things. The anatomy of the sympathetic nervous system, or more specifically, what is the sympathetic trunk, the sympathetic chain, the sympathetic ganglia? would be extra good would be if I could do this briefly right there's a challenge okay um, here we're looking at the very much the posterior walls of the body of the internal cavities neck posterior thorax posterior abdomen there's the pelvis there we can see the ribs we can see the brachial plexus we can see the the brain stem and the brain and this here is the spinal cord so we're looking at this from an anterior perspective at the spinal cord. And here we see these blobs just lateral to the spinal cord and they will be on both sides. This model is just showing slightly different things on either side. And this is the sympathetic trunk. These are also called the paravertebral ganglia because if this is the spinal cord, then the vertebrae are here. So these ganglia are beside the vertebrae, paravertebral ganglia. Um, simply, you can see it's a chain of ganglia. You can imagine it's a trunk, sympathetic trunk, sympathetic chain. So what is the ganglion? Well, um, this is the nervous system. A ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. We would call the same thing a nucleus in the central nervous system, as in, in the spinal cord or the, the brain or the brain stem. Um, and a neuron has a cell body, and from that cell body, it'll send out little dendrites, and it'll send out usually just one, maybe a couple, but of, often one really long cell process, an axon. And the neuron in that way can send an axon, axon potential, can send like an electrical signal in one direction um, along that axon to another part of the body. You may have encountered this concept before, and I'm sure you can imagine how useful a function that would be. So in these ganglia, we have collections of nerve cell bodies. And the other thing about nerve cell bodies is that's where we find connections between nerves. So the axon of many nerves, of many neurons, is surrounded by myelin, a fatty insulating sheath that helps make the action potential propagate more quickly, which can be very useful. Um, but, of course, that insulation would stop connections between neurons. Um, so when we have ganglia, we have neuron cell bodies, and we have connections. So that's a ganglion, and that's the sympathetic trunk. More. Neuroanatomy and the nervous system and the wiring and connections of all this is necessarily complicated but there are some useful simplifications. So in the embryo, when all this formed, there are kind of some things that happen that make this simpler. Okay, one example is um, we're talking about the autonomic nervous system. We're talking about sympathetic nerves. Now, sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves are all motor. They're all going to uh, target autonomic muscle, so cardiac muscle or smooth muscle not skeletal muscle, and they're going to make that muscle contract. So these are muscles of organs, of viscera, things that we don't think about, autonomic stuff that needs to be balanced and regulated, right? And these motor fibers, um, it's like a two neuron chain. So we have the spinal cord, there will be one sympathetic neuron that comes out of the spinal cord, and it has to go to a ganglion somewhere, and meet a second sympathetic neuron, and that sympathetic neuron will run to the target structure. Um, maybe um, the hairs in your skin that make your, sorry, the muscles in your skin that make your hair stand up on end. Maybe the smooth muscle of a blood vessel that controls its dilation. You know, things like that. It literally goes, these go throughout the body, but it's a two neuron chain. The first neuron in that chain is called a pre 
ganglionic neuron and the neuron that leaves the ganglion and goes to the target is called the postganglionic neuron, hopefully for clear reasons. So we talk about sympathetic preganglionic neurons and sympathetic postganglionic neurons, and we're, we're talking about the ganglion. So there has to be a ganglion somewhere between the central nervous system and the target. Um, we find preganglionic sympathetic neurons come out of the spinal cord, so they have cell bodies in the spinal cord, in the lateral horn, and they send their axon out from spinal levels T1 to about L2 or L3. So that's the only place that spinal, preganglionic spinal neurons come out of the central nervous system. They come out of the spinal cord. Those preganglionic sympathetic neurons, they can do a number of things. They will either run from the spinal cord out to the sympathetic ganglion at the same level as them, and then synapse with a postganglionic sympathetic neuron and then travel off around the body. Or that preganglionic sympathetic neuron might travel up, say, look, we have sympathetic ganglia in the neck and we have sympathetic ganglia in the pelvis, but we don't have preganglionic sympathetic neurons in the sacral spinal cord or in the cervical spinal cord. So that means that Preganglionic sympathetic neurons are going to have to run out to the sympathetic trunk and run up away and then synapse in a sympathetic ganglion at a different level. And then a postganglionic sympathetic neuron will run off to the target structure. Right? So the preganglionic neuron could run to the ganglion at the same level, could run to a ganglion at a higher level, could run to a ganglion at a lower level, or it might just run somewhere else. What is a splanchnic nerve? A splanchnic nerve is a collection of preganglionic sympathetic neurons, and there'll be some other fibers in there as well, and they will run to some other ganglia, because remember, we've got to have that two neuron chain. We've got to have preganglionic, postganglionic coming from the ganglion. And what we find, so here's the abdominal aorta, right? And around the abdominal aorta, we also find ganglia. We call these prevertebral ganglia. So if we're going in this direction, we come across these ganglia around the aorta before we get to the ganglia beside the vertebrae. So these are prevertebral ganglia, and the ones beside the vertebrae are paravertebral ganglia. So those splanchnic nerves are bundles of preganglionic sympathetic neurons that run to the aorta, and they will find the prevertebral ganglia. We talked the other week about um, the celiac plexus and ganglion and the superior mesenteric plexus and ganglion. The preganglionic neuron will run to that ganglion, synapse with other neurons at that ganglion, and then postganglionic sympathetic neurons will run off uh, to, well, guess which part of the body they're going to go to the gastrointestinal tract. Oh, this is heavy. How do postganglionic sympathetic neurons get to their target structures? Well, they will either travel with a peripheral nerve. So a peripheral nerve, intercostal nerves, um, you know, nerves to the limbs, brachial plexus, all those nerves that we talk about a lot of the time as nerves, those peripheral nerves are likely to contain sympathetic neurons, as well as somatic motor, somatic sensory, and all the other bits and bobs. Or they might follow arteries. So um, those arteries to the gastrointestinal tract will have sympathetic nerves running with them. When I dissect the neck and the major arteries going to the brain, the common carotid artery, internal carotid artery, I always see a fine filigree network of fibers on those arteries. And that's because those are roots by which the sympathetic nerves get up to the head. And that's how they get to the eye. They follow the arteries. So they follow, they go with peripheral nerves. They make up part of a peripheral nerve or they run with the arteries. A little bit more detail. Rami communicans. Now, ramus just means a branch, like a tree branch. Communicans means a communicating branch. 
Um, and you'll come across the terms white ramus communicans and grey ramus communicans. Now, white suggests that this is a communicating nerve that is myelinated, and grey suggests that this is a communicating nerve that is not myelinated. And it's a little bit counterintuitive. What's happening here? Well, from the spinal cord at thoracic levels, and maybe L2 and L1, L2 and L3, we see um, the sympathetic neurons, so the preganglionic sympathetic neurons, send their axons out through the ventral root, because all motor stuff goes out through the ventral root, and with the anterior ramus, different ramus, spinal cord stuff. Um, so the preganglionic sympathetic neurons run out, and then we see that there's a little branch running to the sympathetic ganglion, and that is the white ramus communicans. So the white ramus communicans contains preganglionic sympathetic neurons running from the spinal cord to the sympathetic ganglia, the sympathetic trunk, the sympathetic chain, and then they synapse. And the postganglionic sympathetic neurons then leave the sympathetic ganglion through grey rami communicans. So these grey rami communicans then are communicating branches to the peripheral nerve. So those postganglionic sympathetic neurons leave the sympathetic ganglion through the grey rami communicans communicans into, say, in this case, an intercostal nerve, go around the body, and they'll innovate the blood vessels that are supplying the skin, they'll innovate the erector pili muscles, they'll innovate the sweat, the, the sweat glands, and all the things they've got to do. Right, how are you doing? I'm going to chuck in another idea. So I said we've got a two neuron chain. Obviously there are thousands and millions of neurons, but the concept is preganglionic neuron synapses with the postganglionic neuron in the ganglion. Now, the neurotransmitter between the preganglionic and postganglionic sympathetic neurons, the neurotransmitter used is acetylcholine. And then that postganglionic sympathetic neuron runs to its target structure, and the neurotransmitter used there is noradrenaline. In Mo in almost every case, in most cases. So the sympathetic nervous system will increase your heart rate, increase the force of contraction, send blood to your muscles, turbocharge your coronary arteries, um, and all sorts of good things like that. Hey, wouldn't it be good if, like, if there was an emergency, you could maybe use a very similar neurotransmitter, like adrenaline, it's very similar to noradrenaline, and just chuck that into the blood so it would flow around the body and hit all those adrenergic receptors at once and like cause the same sort of thing like instantly to help you survive. I don't know, it seems like a good idea. Um, maybe I'll work on that one. Um, I hope that was useful. See you next week.